Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, today's Bulldog Show is sponsored by Parks Yoga right here in Independence, Kentucky. Offers all kinds of classes Monday through Sunday. Go on to parksyoga.com and check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, as always, when there's Trump news, we lead with Trump news. And what do we have to lead today with? Trump sued them all. Who did he sue? He sued Hillary. He sued Sussman. He used, sued Sullivan. He sued all of them. All of them. Comey. Isn't this great? He filed it in federal court in Florida. And what it is, it is a lawsuit for all of the false Russian baloney that they knew was false. You talk about fake news, you know, social media, the news media, talk about fake news. That was more than fake news. That was corruption. That was evil. Intentionally pushing a false story to try to destroy a president of the United States. Not a true story, a false story that they knew it was false. Now, there's going to be defenses of immunity and this forth and so on. You know, I don't care what happens in this lawsuit. I hope he wins, but I'm glad he filed it because it should be filed. They need to have consequences. We are living in a world right now where it is good versus evil. It is America and everything we stand for versus political gangsterism, globalization. Joe Biden yesterday announced when he was over there in Brussels, by the way, he's on a plane apparently now headed to Warsaw, Poland. He, in Brussels, he announced at NATO that food shortages are going to be real. Now, am I the only one? I think I am. I am the only one in America that I'm aware of, commentator from Tucker Carlson to Ben Shapiro and everybody, who has continually expressed this. And I'm going to express it again. If we knew how important Ukrainian grain was, how important everything Ukraine offers the world's economy, shouldn't we have protected it? Look at the costs of the refugee crisis. What it's going to cost to rebuild Ukraine. To what we're doing to arm Ukraine. It would have been so freaking easy. One or both of these actions put NATO tanks on the border and or no fly zone before it ever started. They wanted this war. Joe Biden did nothing to stop this war. It is evil beyond evil. And here's where I'm going to go on it. Well, I'm going to save my rant because I want to cover a few more topics so you know where I'm going with my rant. Joe Biden yesterday said, sanctions don't work. What? How scary is it that we have a senile, demented man running our country? And if you remember, he didn't do the sanctions. He said, if you'd invade, then we do the sanctions. What? It is incredible. Don't you ever forget, American jury, ever, 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 that Joe Biden and his administration wanted this war and allowed this war to happen. It is evil. Then Joe Biden says, well, yeah, I think we ought to kick Russia out of the G20. I think Russia gives a damn right now the G20. No. A majority of Americans say that they believe Joe Biden has a conflict of interest due to his shenanigans, along with Hunter, in Ukraine and Russia. Good for Americans. Do you hear what he said about chemical weapons? Um, if they use chemical weapons, it depends on how much. It's unbelievable. Then when he asked about re-election, he said he, yeah, he'd like to run against that guy. Remember what Joe Biden said? He'd like to take Donald Trump out behind his tool shed or garage or whatever. Woodshed. Mr. Tough Guy Joe Biden. Pal. 
I, I just want to go ahead and say this, and I'm not going to use the H word because that probably triggers things. And uh, but you know what word I'm talking about? The word I'm going to use instead of that, you're going to know exactly what word. I loathe this man. And when everybody talks about, oh, we need to have civil discord. Why should we have civil discourse with somebody who is so damn evil, who is so corrupt, whose policies just keep hurting Americans? Joe Biden demanded that Herschel Walker and Dr. Oz resign from the Council of Presidential Fitness because of their running for office or they're going to be fired. Ooh. Folks, I thought about something. You know, Russia paid a heavy price in their Afghani war. And you know what led to the end of the Afghani war for them? The body counts going back to Russia. Russia had enough. The Soviet had, Union public had enough. Then you know what else they did? The Chechen war. Guess what? Same thing. They had enough. 40,000 troops are dead, about 15,000 dead, but 40,000 dead, injured, or missing. And our thing that I've been stressing and nobody else is stressing, you don't think those Russian troops are not getting in Ukraine and saying, I'm out of here? I guarantee you that some of those Russian troops are the refugees headed to Poland, Romania, Hungary. They're like, I'm out of here. This is my chance to leave. You don't think that there's massive desertions going on in Ukraine right now? I guarantee you that there is. Last on this issue, war crimes. They say, oh, there's war crimes. You know what, why do they even say this? Will you please give me the last uh, political dictator that stood trial for freaking war crimes that made any difference? I guess Saddam Hussein, yeah, we hung him. But other than that, I mean, I mean, really? What are we going to do to Putin? War crimes? Right. Uh, New York, L.A., San Francisco, and Chicago, during the pandemic, had the most mass exodus of any of the cities, any place in the country. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? It's unbelievable. Democratic-run cities. Cluster messes. Uh, Joe Rogan called... The silicon workers mentally ill because of how woke they are. I love that. Now, to the pandemic, heart disease deaths were up 4.3%. Stroke deaths up 6.4%. How sad is that? How many of those heart patients didn't get their treatment because of bullshit COVID policies? Stroke, same. It's so sad. All the people that died, but by golly, they didn't die of COVID. New York City, can't make this up. Eric Adams has lifted the vax ban for players and performers, but not police and ordinary people. Hmm, why would he do that? By the way, I'm happy for Kyrie Irving. He gets to play now because I want the ban lifted for everybody. Can't make this up. Guess who gave... Adams over a million bucks. The owner of the New York Mets. Hmm. What's coming up? The baseball season. I got to ask you a question. I, how does a person stand in the public realm, hot news cameras, and announce that and, and be able to live with themselves? How does Eric Adams live with himself doing something like that? Cops got to get vaccinated, but those ball players can play. Even when there's collisions at home plate in second base. Yeah. Airline CEOs are now calling for a ban of the masks. It's time to end the masks. Oh, uh, really? I should have probably put this story second because... It is the most sad and compelling story. AAA announced there is a 20% increase on calls for people running out of gas. 20% increase.
People running out of gas. What does that mean? What does that anecdote and that statistic mean? What's going on out there for average Jane and Joes? Running, people running out of gas. Don't have money to put in their gas tank. How sad is that? You know, every once in a while, I mean, you know me, when I get an original thought, I claim it proudly. But I also always give credit when somebody has a thought. And I don't adopt it except I give credit. Tulsi Gabbard said something that hit me like a train last night. And it's awesome. And I'm mad I didn't think about it. How messed up is it that Joe Biden required the nominee for the Supreme Court to be a black woman? He made it a requirement. And then that black woman couldn't define what a woman was. (laughs) By the way, let me do that for you. If somebody asked me whether or not, who, what's a woman, I could do the chromosome thing, but I would, I would probably say this. It says, well, in, in Latin and law, there's something called res ipsa loquitur, which means it speaks for itself. I would say gender speaks for itself. A woman is someone who is born with female genitalia. That simple. They can reproduce. They can bear children. Men can't. I mean, how, how hard would that have been for this woman to say, instead she said, I'm not a biologist. By the way, there was a great meme I saw yesterday, and it was a meme of uh, the, a word game, and it had W-O-M blank for where the E would go in N, and there was Judge Jackson, and she couldn't finish the puzzle. <laughs> that was great. NCAA, how messed up is it? that the NCAA allows Leah Thomas to do all these things, and they're more worried about a transgender than a woman. Whatever happened to Title IX? Let's protect the women. Let's protect the ladies. Sick. Here's a sad story. China's telecom giant, ZTE, was on probation for messing around with Iran. A American judge lifted the probation, Chinese national television news hailed it as a victory over communism, over the American legal system. It's incredible. A Georgia parent, while reading from a book in a library with sexual stuff in it for kids, was told at the school board meeting, stop, it's inappropriate. So a child, private of their home, privacy of their home, can read that, but by golly, it's inappropriate to read in a public meeting. Ron DeSantis declared Emma Wyant the winner over Thomas in that swim meet. I love it. This is a funny story. I mean, it had some violence, but it's still funny because who the players are. These are fighters, UFC. A little while ago, Covington, a while back, it wasn't too long ago, Covington beat uh, Masvidal, the UFC fighter. Well, they were in Miami, and apparently Covington had his location publicly on his phone of where he was, and he was talking trash to Masvidal. So Masvidal went and found him and punched him. He's been arrested. But is that hysterical? I don't know why anybody would public to the world where they're located. I don't. Uh, Last but not least, a a sad story. And I usually don't put these stories on the show but this one just hits you in the gut. And I'm just doing it for a word of caution because if my saying this uh, helps all of us protect our teenagers a little bit better, so be it. For example, one thing that I always say to my kids, uh, I used to always say, I love you, and I used to always say, be safe. In the back of my mind, I always thought to myself by my saying, be safe, when they were out, that that might trigger them to drive a little slower, not drive if they've been drinking. You know, I love you, be safe. Those 16 teenagers killed when their car turned in to the path of a semi in Oklahoma and wipes out the lives of six teenage girls. Unfathomable. 
unfathomable. And it's springtime, and spring's in the air, and everybody gets spring fever, and kids, teenagers load up in those cars, and I just want to encourage all of you. By the way, I'm not preaching to you. I don't want it to sound like I'm preaching to you, but we all need to make sure that we tell all of our teenagers to be safe out there driving during spring because it always seems like when spring, every, the kids are excited, you know, but it's just six teenage girls. I don't know them. Just freaking knock me down. Just the thought of it. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. Have a great weekend.